told me a story in the past uh, about having to impersonate I, one of the Beatles. I think I might have to start like drinking to on these things. <laughs> well, one morning in the office boys' room, the phone rings, somebody go down to such and such an office. Put my hand up, went down. There's a big round table and Yoko Ono is sitting there and there's a film crew in there. Yoko called me over and said, will you go up to the post room and get a big post sack? I said, yeah, yeah. So I came back down with this post sack and she beckoned me over and said, now, you're gonna sit next to me, put the bag over your head and you're John. Because John forgot he can't do this interview today because he's in court with Paul. So you have to be John. So this, this documentary was, was filmed uh, about record bootlegging. Yeah. And of course, I never saw it. And there was no videos at the time. I thought I'd dreamt it. Um, but suddenly, you came up to me one day and said, guess what I've got? And I had no idea. And you'd contacted Mark Lewison, and he'd found the clip of that programme uh, with me pretending to be John Lennon. Three and a half years later, having just opened the show at Madison Square Garden for Elton John with the Kiki D Band, who I was in at the time, suddenly I was watching John Lennon on stage at his last ever performance, performing with Elton. So, amazing memories of that time, I have to say. All in all, how long did you spend at Apple Records? I was only at Apple for two or three months because I wanted to be a guitar player. Now, your father, Davey, had done a record with a guy called Colin Scott, who was a Canadian folk singer, a larger-than-life guy. And Davey said, why don't you go and audition for that? Well, David played electric guitar as well as acoustic guitar on the album. I didn't have one and I'd never played one. I was still at Apple. So cheekily, I asked Mal Evans, the Beatles roadie, is there any way I could borrow a guitar, electric guitar and an amp for a few days because I need to practice and then I'm going for an audition? And he said, oh, I don't know about that. Anyway, at the end of the day, I hear this puffing and panting and Mal has bought a guitar and amp right to the top of the building. And when I opened it up, it was a black Rickenbacker. And he said, if you disappear with this, I'll find you. I said, no, 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 no. Brilliant. So I, I, had, uh, I had John's guitar for a week in my little basement flat, and I got the gig with Colin Scott, and that was, that's how my playing started.